Hey, how's it going, guys? He's like, come on, Jason. It just turned 7.30 on my screen. <laughs> anyway, how's it going, guys? I'm glad we got some uh, fanfare in the chat already here looking at that. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to spend too long hot-dogging and grandstanding here because I've got comics pretty much like right below the camera line here. I've got three stacks plus stuff down here. But basically, I went on vacation last week. And uh, I didn't go anywhere or do anything, uh, so I just kind of bought comics, and uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that because I went a little crazy, I guess. So uh, let's just say by the end of the day, I took my phone and deleted my uh, eBay thing on there. So yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> uh, anyway, while we're waiting for more people to come on in, I'm going to go ahead and go over my... Uh, Local shop pickups for last week, you know, pretty much current polls, what I read. Uh, I guess uh, my modern pick of the week, non-DC, non-Marvel, was Shanghai Red number three. Uh, this continues to be an excellent read. Uh, if you guys like, you know, the revenge thriller stories combined with, you know, like the, the feel of like the Old West plus, you know, pirates and stuff, uh, this book has been very solid so far. So they're only on issue three, so I recommend... Uh, you guys get on board with this if you want a good image book, because this one, it's very good. Uh, next up, <clears throat> Teen Titans 21. Uh, pretty cool, awesome cover there. Um, Alex Garner did this one, I believe. Uh, but in terms of the Teen Titans, I know some people are fans of this team. I, I just can't get into this book. I'm sorry, but um, I'm just not a huge fan of this team so far. I might give it one more issue to see what my thoughts are on it, uh, but... At the very least, it has nice covers for cover Bs, but eh, like I said, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the, the the new cast. At least it's got, you know, Wallace West and Damien's in it. They're fun, but like I said, the new team's not growing on me yet, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Actually, we got some action in the chat. Uh, I apologize for showing over the chat first. Uh, looks like Comics Miss Explained was the first one in. Cheers, sir. Uh, HME3 Comics is going on, man. How's it going? Uh, he's got a tag going on now. Uh, if you guys hadn't seen his channel, it's basically he wants to know what your first comic book you ever purchased was. So check out his channel and participate in that. Uh, I got JPL Flash Comics and Geekdom. I believe he started a 300 subscriber contest on his channel. So go ahead and check him out. Uh, he's got an excellent channel. Uh, Jason Smith and Miss Hustle, they're going back and forth in the chat, it looks like. Uh, and then Easy E the Game Hunter, how's it going, man? He says, what's up? I see you taking one out of my book with the wolf pack. Oh, yeah, you did wear a wolf pack shirt on your stream, too. Now, this is what I was wearing today. <laughs> that, that's what I do. <laughs> and then Bad Dad 320 how's it going, man? If you haven't checked out that, that guy's, ch check his stuff out. Like, he's got some of the best books I have ever seen. Uh, so check out Bad Dad 320. He's got a phenomenal collection he's been unboxing recently. Um, and then Tacoma Comics just topped in. What's up, man? How's it going? Uh, Stay Puff 1983. Thanks for making it, man. How's it going? Uh, all right. So back to what I got last week. Uh, kind of one of my other favorite reads, but unfortunately, I think it's only got one more issue to go. Uh, Buffy the Reckoning. So if you guys are Buffy the Vampire Slayer fans, I highly recommend getting on this. Um, like I said, once again, three issues in, kind of like Shanghai Red, uh, but more or less, this is, I think this is going to be the final conclusion to the Buffy Dark Horse storyline. Apparently the, uh, the rights to Buffy the Vampire Slayer are going back to Fox after this miniseries. Uh, so after issue four, I believe, I think that's going to be the last Dark Horse Buffy comic book. So it's a little sad in a way, but they're going out with a bang. Um, and this one, they get back from the future. Back to the future, I guess. Um, and then they have to fight Hearth, the uh, the bad guy from Frey, who's Frey's brother. Slash, he's also a vampire. And he has the mayor from Buffy Season 3 on his side. So, uh, very awesome read. If you guys like the TV show, I highly recommend checking this out. Just because there's they're, they're just throwing everything at the wall at this point in here. Uh, next up, Just League Dark number 2. Um, I actually like this one quite a bit better than the first issue especially since we're still getting all those awesome Greg Capullo covers. But nonetheless, there's kind of an uh, unexpected heel turn, if you will, at the end of this book. I kind of didn't see coming, and I was like, wow, they're really going to do that. <laughs> so a uh, very interesting read. Like I said, this is only issue two, so it's another one you guys might want to hop on if you guys still have it in your shops. 
Um, just curious to see where they're going to turn the direction of this book after a couple issues. Uh, also picked up Die, Die, Die number two. Um, so far, Die, Die, Die is two for two on people getting their noses cut off. So very interesting read from Robert Kirkman and Scott Gimple. Um, but yeah, I, this definitely has my interest. I'll probably end up putting this on my pull list. Uh, but yeah, definitely recommend that if you guys like the first issue. The second issue is just as nuts. Uh, X-Men Red number seven. Wow, they're already up to number seven. Uh, cool. I believe that's Jenny Frizen on the cover. Um, once again, with the, the, the Uncanny X-Men reboot looming, we'll see how far that goes goes into red hopefully they get their full story arc in and this book keeps going after that because it is a solid read but kind of like i said i think i said in one of my contest videos last week i think i did for metarog i love x-men red but it feels like they're i want to see an x-men book where it doesn't feel like they're leaving chess pieces off the board basically um so they got a good team here but i want to see the big x-men team back together but nonetheless if you guys are looking for an x-men read before uncanny in a few months uh, I think X-Men Red is by far the best option. So there's that. Let's get back to the chat. Uh, Easy E says, I've never read the Buffy books. Might have to watch the series, then read these. Yeah, uh, Easy E, I recommend, like, obviously, if you haven't seen the series, it's my favorite show of all time. So check the series out. Um, season one's a little bit hard to get through just because it's very dated at this point. Um, and it was more of like a teen drama. But season two really amps it up quite a bit. Uh, so season two to seven, with the exception of season four, it's season four kind of sucked. But seasons two through seven minus four are really good. And then the comic book world, season eight, solid. Joss Whedon written most of that himself. He actually had Brian K. Vaughn. I think Jeff Loeb came in for a couple issues. Those guys did good work on there, too. Uh, but I kind of checked that after season eight. So the reckoning has actually been really good. Uh, looks like Simon Comics has joined us. Hey, what's up, Simon Comics? He's got some uh, very nice collections as well, if you guys want to check out his channel. Uh, let's get his sub count up, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Stay Puff Love Storm. Looks like we got Mr. White Glove, Splash Page Comics in the house. Hey, how's it going, Splash Page Comics? Uh, all right. <laughs> Jason Smith says, who's these news people? And he retracted it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for that, Jason. Anyway, back to the books. Uh, we got Cold Spots number one, New Colin Bun. Um. If you guys want a really good review of this, check out Chuck Loda Comics channel. This was their highlighted book of the week. Um, once again, this book didn't do a whole heck of a lot for me, I'll be honest. It had some cool, gritty art in it, and I like the tone he's setting. I might end up getting issue two just to give this book a chance. Uh, but I just came off of reading Infidel, which had some really stellar art, and it felt like a very similar topic to me, uh, You know, kind of like the paranormal and ghosts and that stuff. Uh, so you guys might want to give this book a chance, but so far I wasn't too thrilled with the first issue. Uh, but nonetheless, Cold Spot's number one. If you guys want to get a decent image, number one. I don't want to completely dog the book, but like I said, it probably wasn't for me. Uh, and actually a really good read last week, though, was Venom number five. Venom gets his wings finally. <laughs> it's a pretty cool moment. Um, but yeah, Donnie Cates. I know that, you know, but Donnie Cates is on this whole hype train, especially in our comic community here on YouTube. Uh, but this, I think this book's the main reason why. I know he's the God Country, which is phenomenal in the past, but he's basically taking a character that, in my opinion, was a little stagnant. I personally never cared about that much. I know a lot of people out there are Venom fans, but I wasn't. But after, you know, these, this first little run of five issues, he's got me sold on Venom. This book has been probably my marvel book of the year it's it's just been excellent so far so um i know there's a couple spinoffs coming out wednesday i think it's the nam like the the nam story of venom and then venom first host i think are both out this wednesday um i think the nam was written by daddy kate so i'll probably be the one to read but the first host i believe is drawn by mark bagley so it's just like do you get both yeah probably why not <laughs> so and if I see him, I might grab him, but this has been an excellent read. And a couple extra pickups this week. I bought this for a buck at a, a Books of Million. It's House of Secrets 92 reprint. <laughs> Probably never going to be able to afford the real thing at a high grade, readable grade. Uh, so I saw this for a buck. I figured, hey, why not? Um, of course, we all know this is an excellent read. Awesome Bernie writes and art. Awesome Lynn Wine writing. Um, I'd never read this before last week, so I figured if nothing else on vacation, I'd read 
the first appearance of Swamp Thing, and it didn't disappoint. So very cool stuff. That just that was interesting. I never really knew that he wasn't called Alec Holland in this first outing. So um, I'm definitely like once that DC streaming thing hits, one of my first goals. My first goal is to read Teen Titans by uh, Wolfman and Perez, but my second goal is to read up on the old Swamp Thing stuff. Probably the original run, like whatever Burning Rights and stuff I can find, and then I want to read the Alan Moore saga of Swamp Thing. So I was happy to find this for a buck and finally read that. <clears throat> then kind of the last thing I showed that I, I got a chance to really read last week, <laughs> my surprise pick of the week on the Comic Core for me, Phantom Stranger number 14. I think this was, what I say, 1978-ish? Something like that. Found this um, in a three dollar bin at an antique store. So if, I actually did a surprise live stream on Thursday just because I was like, I didn't end. I was like, I don't want to show tons of books here. Boy, it was I wrong to do that. But anyway, I may as well just show these now and did like a two hundred book haul. But anyway, uh, I actually just uh, was putting this in this shiny reflective mylar bag. Hi, there's me again. Um, and then I was just like, is that? Swamp Thing, so I had to pop it open because I read this, and I'm like, oh, that kind of looks like Swamp Thing. I he's in this. And then I decided to read this. So, um, excellent Phantom Stranger story in here. Basically, he Phantom Stranger goes after the main bad guy of this book. He actually gets defeated to the point where he gets his heart ripped out by a surgeon because the bad guy needs a heart because he's dying. Uh, so what happens, once the bad guy gets the heart, he starts to become haunted by the Phantom Stranger because it's the Phantom Stranger. Um, so basically by the end of it, the, the bad guy dies, the doctor's like, you know, how's he not, where's the heart? I put it in there myself. And basically the moral story is the bad guy had no heart. So very cool read. Um, great art. I think this is another Lynn Wine story. So I was very happy with that once I read it. All right, before we get into the next haul, let's get into the chat. Uh, let's see. JPL says the go-to geeks recently showed the original one and that Daz, the key chasers video. Oh, so he must be talking about the first parent swap thing. Yeah, I need to catch up on go-to geeks. They got some very good videos. Uh, they did my contest, actually. And once again, they didn't disappoint in the books they showed. Splash Page says he grew up in the 70s. It's okay. Uh, Simon Comics says, I saw it today when he showed it off at the Cap 11. First Captain America issue, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby left DC because they were being ripped off. Yeah, that's an interesting story in itself. Yeah, I'm going to have to catch that video. And then, let's see. <laughs> Splash says he still has his bell bottoms. Nice. <laughs> All right. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way and go on to the next haul. <laughs> I'm kind of just – actually, you know what? I'm, I'm, I, we'll show the quick eBay first since we're talking about Captain America. And then after that, I'm going to talk about my slabs I got back in the mail last week. So just a quick little eBay purchase. I think I got these for about 4 or $5 shipped a piece. Um, <clears throat> and they're actually really clean copies, too, surprisingly, because these two books, I had to rebag them into these nice Mylars, but they came in just, you know, garbage old bags that were super yellowed. So I, I can't believe these books turned out as clean as they were. So I got Captain America 104. I kind of want to start getting these 12 cent Captain Americas when I see them cheap uh, because, you know, what's not the what's not the love about these old Captain Americas, as you guys in the community know. So got some awesome art on there. And then 105, I think this is the one with that really cool, like you open it up. It's got that awesome splash panel on there. I should say splash panels. Maybe it was 104. Oh, no, it was 105. I just love the way it opens up with that art in there like that from, you know, the King Jack Kirby. So I was flipping through this just to look at the quality of the book and all that stuff. So, yeah, look at that. That's just awesome. So, yeah, sometimes I wish comics still looked like this. So I was very happy with the condition of these books, all things considered. They weren't shipped the greatest in terms of, you know, packaging and that stuff. They're kind of throwing out a little envelope, putting no boards or anything. Had a lot of that last week, actually. But nonetheless, the books came safe. So happy with those. All right. So my slabs, as you guys saw in the thumbnail, I got a couple slabs back in the mail. So I put in the link below if you guys get bored enough to ever watch one of my old videos. Uh, I had an eBay haul way back in March. Feels like a year ago now. Where basically I, it was like a 57 book lot maybe or something like that. Something weird. Um, 
but basically it's just this person's uh, it was this couple that was selling some comic books online that a storage unit or their father's stuff they were just kind of selling it away in bins of 50 uh they didn't even know what they had nothing was boarded it was bagged and the nastiest grossest bags i've ever had to handle like the tape on there was probably from like scotch tape is probably from like the late 80s and they just sat in a storage unit until i guess these people decided to uncover the stuff so a lot of the stuff was kind of beat up, gross, very smelly. I actually, had, it took me probably like four tries to bag and board everything just because like this room isn't as big as it looks on the camera probably. So just the, the stench and the smell and the must from these old books, like I had to step out several times. But nonetheless, if you guys paid attention to the thumbnail, I got two sweet slabs somehow from that lot. Luckily, these books were in the middle and they shipped it um so i was i was shocked that these books came back nines like I, i'm not an expert grader i usually don't submit books because like i said in past videos like sometimes like i'd rather just buy another key issue or another book than spend you know hundreds of dollars getting the same stuff i already have graded but to each his own <laughs> so i just wanted i thought these were in solid condition so i was like ah, i may as well get them slabbed and preserved um, that way, you know, they're going to have a good rest of their comic book life, I guess. So got Green Lantern 85 came back in 9-2. I was actually expecting this to be the higher of the two. Um, but nonetheless, 9-2 creamed off white pages is better than I thought. I was My guess on this one was probably going to be an 8-5. Uh, just because, like I said, I, I'm not an expert grader. I don't try to be or anything like that. Um, but I was very happy with a 9-2 grade on this one, obviously. So there's that. And then my baby, <laughs> probably one of my top books in my collection now. First appearance of John Stewart, Green Lantern in 87. Came back in 9.4. I was shocked this came back in 9.4. This thing had a little bit of a gnarly spine roll when I sent it in. Um, and then the pages, I mean, it does say off-white pages, which they are super off-white. So because of that, I, I didn't know how they were, how strictly they are going to grade based on the fact that, you know, the pages were kind of crispy. But they gave it a 9.4, so that's really cool. So I was expecting probably at best like a 7.5. Boy, I there's a reason I don't work for CGC. So uh, like I said, I am extremely, extremely happy with this. I just need to figure out how to uh, get these displayed now. All right, I want to get back to the check because it's popping over there. All right, so Splash Page says, yeah, Silver Age books are great. Yeah, I know, man. I keep, I'm getting sucked into the Silver Age rabbit hole if you will i guess where it's just like i'm more interested in collecting silver age especially the 12 centers uh from dc and marvel i really like getting dc neil adams from the 70s and late 60s and 70s jim stranko marvel like those are my two like if i see him i grab immediately and now after reading that swamp thing i'm like oh, if i can find lynn wine written stuff i want to get it now and then i'll definitely want to get rights and like i'd be a fool not to um jpl says that was awesome thank you uh, Stay Puff says, I need more Silver Age books. You stop buying new books, LOL. You know, I was kind of, you know, if you guys like have been watching my video since I started making these, I've kind of said the same thing at first, but I just still have a thrill and it's a blast going to the shop on Wednesdays and, you know, getting a small stack of books to read. Because sometimes with these older ones, they're so messy, you don't even want to mess with reading them. And I, I do read as many as I can, but, you know, I just like getting the Wednesday books. Um, getting into a storyline that comes out once a month and reading it that way too. So I'm kind of just a sucker for that, I guess. So I'll probably never stop getting new books at this point. Uh, what's up, JD? How's it going, man? He also made a, a contest video entry for me. I actually put the uh, 200 subscriber contest playlist in the links below too, if you guys want to see who else participated so far. I think I'm up to 15 entrants. Uh, so all the information is below if you guys are interested in that. Uh, Simon says... Sorry, I actually scrolled too far. I think he's, yeah, Simon Comics says 100, 101, and 102 are still, he's still looking for those. Yeah, man, me too. I'd love to have a Cap 100. I think uh, Midwest Comic Man Paul just got a very nice, crispy version of issue 100 that he's going to get graded. So it's kind of jealous to see that, but it's a very nice book. Looks like Gene Paul Ace Peter, GPAP has joined us. Hey, what's up, GPAP? How's it going, man? Glad you could make it. It's like Joker M21 is in the house, as they say. Uh, he says 9.2 is a great grade for that book. Yeah, I know. I, like I said, I was super thrilled. I was like, I was 
I could not believe it. I actually peaked at the grades early. I was just rolled out of bed one day. It's gotten to the point where it's been since March since I sent them in. I did send them in as soon as I got them, basically. And I didn't get it back till last week. And for those of you watching on the Super Rewind, like years from now, which probably no one will be, <laughs> I, this is eight, or, uh, August. So, yeah, I was checking like every day for tracking and shipping and that type of stuff. And I actually like, clicked one thing and there were the grades. So, like, cool. There goes my... Uh, Surprise unboxing face, I guess, if you will. All right. Splash says Silver and Barrage Age books rule. Hey, it looks like we got comics with Bueller supporting the NW Wolfpack. So what's up, Bueller? How's it going, man? <laughs> JPL Flash is out. Uh, he says it's 1 a.m. over there. Yeah, thanks for making it, man. You have a good night. All right. So what we got next here? I will probably just go ahead and get in. To, I went to a, a comic convention. is a very, very small convention just here in town. Uh, is at a convention hall. But basically, they try to do like a little show once a year. And I wanted to go just to at least give my support to their show. Because, you know, those small ones, they thrive on that $5 admission. They really do. So if nothing else, I at least wanted to go give my five bucks to them. Maybe take a little stroll around. I got a little, I started to panic a little bit. I didn't realize it was a two-floor small convention like i don't even know why they needed two floors but they used two floors so the first floor was like all like arts and crafty stuff like and a little bit of like cosplay type thing sale and i'm just like what is this what have i walked into so i kind of just walked back out and i saw people going upstairs i'm like ah oh, i bet there's something better upstairs and thank goodness i did because i almost i guess rage quit this little convention uh, they had a dealer room up there. In terms of people having comics and stuff, they didn't have a lot of comics up there. They probably had a solid six dealers that had comics. And one of them was just like trash bins of dollar books that looked like, you know, they've been out, left out in the sun for 10 years. So I didn't even bother flipping through those because I had to go to work that day anyway. Uh, but I think I bought off of two of the vendors. So a couple of them had some good stuff. Save that for last. Uh, so one of the guys, he had a, a decent $5 box. So I got a, a very clean copy of House of Mystery 198. So nothing too special about this issue. Thought, just thought I had a really cool cover. Uh, and for five bucks, like as you, can, you guys can see, kind of by that spine, hopefully, it's actually in really nice condition for, you know, being from the late 70s. Or I actually might be even be earlier than that. Um, but nonetheless, I was thrilled with the condition of this book. So I had to have it. And then this is a first for my collection. Got a Wonder Woman 300. I've always just loved this. You know, it's got that uh, big spy in the wraparound cover. So I've always just wanted to go ahead and grab this. And uh, for five bucks, I figured it was like a pretty solid price for that. Really good condition. Uh, I got a few dollar books from a vendor. And actually, there's some really nice dollar books. If I didn't have, because I went to this Sunday and I bought pretty much everything else the rest of the week. If I didn't buy any of this other stuff, I probably would have bought like a huge stack from this guy because he had some good quality stuff um what's the cover price on that wonder one i don't think it's the canadian variant for man it's a dollar fifty because i think there is a two dollar variant out there if i'm not mistaken that was probably like what a canadian price variant or something like that so yeah unfortunately it's not the variant that'd be pretty cool if it was but nah, i actually was the first thing i checked when i was going through that box uh but anyway dollar pulls i uh, got death of superman for buck uh, this is kind of one of those books I pick it up every single time. I see it for cheap because if you guys don't know, once again, it's just this is the first comic I ever bought to kind of participate in that tag, I guess. Uh, it was the fourth printing, but you know, every time I see the first printing for a buck, I'll go ahead and pick it up just because it's of sentimental value at this point, basically. So had to have that. I was surprised to see this next one for a dollar because this used to be in the Wizard Hot 10 or whatever that was called way back when and it stood up there for a while. And this used to be worth quite a bit of money when the Matrix was in theaters. This is the the Matrix uh, preview or something like that. I can't remember the exact name this book has, but uh, more or less this book was recalled because of the insane violence in it. And I guess, you know, violence against babies and stuff or something like that. As you can see, it's a pretty creepy cover. Uh, but for a buck, I mean, I've just... I always like the Matrix movie, so I figured why not pick it up for a buck. Got Doom Patrol 19. I believe this is the first Grant Morrison on the title. Uh, so I, downstairs, I got a whole big stack of Doom Patrol. I bought uh, half-price books for probably 15 cents a piece. 
Um, but I didn't have this issue. I think I'm missing maybe one or two more. Once I get those one or two more, I think I'm going to read the whole series finally. So I'm glad to at least finally have Morrison's first issue uh, because this was one missing from my collection. Next up, it is not the Phantom second print crazy newsstand version, but I got well, I got Batman 457. I believe this is the first Tim Drake and Robin costume or something like that. Uh, but really cool cover. Tim Drake's my Robin. He's my favorite Robin of all time. So definitely had to have this for the collection. Uh, I've got Animal Man number five. Not one of those things. I always pick these Animal Man Grant Morrison's up when I see them. I always love the Brian Bullen covers. Uh, but just the probably you know, it's if it's not my favorite Grant Morrison run, it's definitely a top three favorite Grant Morrison run for me. Uh, Cause Animal Man is really awesome. Probably All Star Superman is my best, my favorite one. Then maybe New X Men and then Animal Man. But all three of those could switch day by day. But love me some Animal Man. Uh, got Miss Marvel twenty one. Kind of once again with the movie looming next year. You can't leave these in dollar bins. So every time I see Miss Marvel for cheap from the Bronze Age, I gotta have it. So they had one of these for a buck. Had to get that. I uh, got a thing number one for a dollar. So this is not one of those things I've been looking for for it just because I had it uh, a long time ago. Like my parents bought me a huge box of comics that are like probably like five for a dollar or something. I had like most of the run of the thing in it, except for the first issue. So pretty cool to finally get the first issue of this. Uh, got Transformers number 22. Uh, the uh, 25th anniversary variant. Not sure if uh, Joker M21 still in the chat. But I know he was looking for all these at one point. So now he's got it kind of got me on the bug of collecting these anniversary variants. I've never seen the Transformers one before. So I thought that was pretty cool. Another thing I'm a sucker for are wizard one half, especially ones I don't have. Here's the Witchblade Tomb Raider one half wizard edition. It's got that like 90s ified gold foil gamut going on. And of course, they always had to come with the uh, certificates of authenticity for some reason. Because I guess <laughs> I wonder if people really made you know, bootleg copies of wizard one halves to the point where they had to make certificates of authenticity. Well, who knows? And then my kind of only little splurge purchase for this convention, got the, uh, invincible iron man, number seven first, I guess, technically cameo, but it's kind of the money book for the first appearance of Riri Williams. So another vendor was selling this for 25. And then I found this and this guy's $10 box. I figured, you know, why not? Uh, I think this book's slowly starting to heat up quite a bit. So I figured I just joined the train at 10 bucks. So there we go. And that was it for that convention I went to. So let's go back to the chat and see what we got going on. Like I said, I think I missed the arrival of Four Man's Comics. He says NWO for life. So how's it going, Four Man? I got to send you a tracking number, man. I got one for you. I'll do that after this live show. I finally sent your package out today. I was going to send everything out Saturday, but then it rained, and I didn't want to get everybody's stuff wet. So uh, Stay Puff says, small cons are great, cheap admissions, some quality stuff. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, my only regret from that is that I went two years ago, and they had more comic dealers and vendors there. Uh, but like I guess when I'm collecting this many comics, I guess I'm only, I really don't need that. But it would have just been cool to see a little bit more. Uh, but nonetheless, it was very awesome to see, you know, at least six vendors there with quality stuff. Uh, thank you, Beeler, for the suggestion for the thumbs up. That's cool. Thank you, man. Uh, great video hustle. You're more technologically more advanced than me. I haven't figured life feeds yet. So uh, we'll be waiting on you to go live for, man. You know, we'll be there. TJ Watson, what's up, man? How's it going? All right. Really like convention, but it's getting so crowded. Everyone moves as one, says Simon Comics. Yeah, Simon, you, there's a lot of cons out there. I mean, especially like you know New York Comic Con, C2E2. On Saturdays, they can get shoulder to shoulder. This one is actually pretty nice. Like the smaller ones are kind of like the ones to go to, in my opinion, anymore, because you can get some solid books. And kind of just, you know, go at your own pace. You're not running from line to line to try to get as much stuff knocked out in one day. Uh, but, yeah, anymore. Like, I'm going to, a, I guess, a medium-sized con next month. I'm really looking forward to that. I had a great time last year. Uh, all right. Simon says, I got Doom Patrol 113 for, like, five cents in a comic collection. I bought a small collection for super cheap. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. You can't You can't beat cheap or free comics, that's for sure. Uh, Bueller says, we have a small con con Frankenstein every three months in Portland, 
and it's wall wall comics and nothing else. Yeah, that that sounds like a good dream to me. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Puff says it's like that the big cons mega con here in Orlando is massively growing every year. Yeah, I keep hearing things about mega con. That'd be one I wouldn't mind going to uh, eventually. TJ says Amazon covers are amazing. Oh, absolutely. I love Brian Boland stuff. Um, there's a reason I bought Killing Joke before anyone else was talking about it way back when, just because of the awesome cover and obviously the uh, art on the inside. Uh, like I said, I'm a pretty big Brian Boland fan. There's nothing else. I wish I had more of his stuff in my collection, too. Uh, poor man says those one halves are going to be worth hundreds one day. Yeah, maybe worth hundreds of pennies, I guess. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's funny. Every time I keep noticing more and more in dollar bins, there's a point in the 90s, like I think it was Gen 13 one half. My brother actually paid $40, I think, for a Gen 13, or maybe it's 20, but nonetheless, more than a dollar for the Gen 13 one. Uh, way back when, there was one that was um, the X Files one, I think, was the other money book that was going for a while. Now you can get it for like $5 or less, and that's probably at max. Uh, Simon's asking, do you negotiate prices? Sometimes, like when I went to Indiana Comic Con, I negotiate a little bit. Um, like I think, for instance, I've got the Wolverine number one for the ongoing and then uh, X Factor number six, first apocalypse. I think I paid like 20 bucks for them because I wanted 20 bucks for the Wolverine number one. I'm like, hey, if you throw this book in, can I just give you 20 bucks for both the guys? Like, sure, whatever, because he, he didn't have a high price on the other one. Uh, but obviously, when it comes to dollar books and stuff, I'm not going to argue with them. That's for sure. Uh, I, If the first appearance of Riri wasn't heating up, I might have tried to get him down on like a little bit more. But especially if I was like, if, if the total was $22 and I had a 20, maybe I'd just say, hey, can I give you 20? Something like that. But I, I didn't do that this time just because it was a smaller con. That guy probably already heard that stuff all day. Um, early Playboy had some amazing covers, said TJ Watson. I just read them for the articles, he says. Sure. Uh, poor, he says also, poor man, there are a few one halves that are. And poor man says, ha ha, did Wizards Price Guy say one half X Files with 80? Now, I remember it was actually selling at some cons for a little bit. Not anymore, obviously, but even like the, the first couple issues that X Files run for a minute, like you couldn't find them for cheap. And like I said, nowadays, since, you know, they've beaten the show into the ground, they're dollar books now. So I used to love those covers, though. And uh, Charlie Adler did most of the art on the original ones for The Walking Dead. So I thought that was always kind of cool. Uh, Simon's got to go. Yeah, see you later, Simon. Thanks for making it, man. All right. So the next stack, we'll just keep rolling here. Uh, I believe this is my half price books stuff of the week. So I went to half price books. I was waiting for them to do their refill post. $20 tote bag sale. Um, and luckily I found they found them on the right day because I went a week later and they didn't, I mean, it was barren in there. Uh, so luckily I went the week after that and they, I mean, they just jam packed their dollar bins and they also set up a folding table and put out 20 cent books. So I'm like 20 cent books, sign me up. So I'll go over the, the dollar fines first, then we'll get into the uh, the trash bins, I guess, if you will, because there was a lot of garbage, but there were some nice things in there. Uh, I got an Invincible Iron Man 137 for a buck. Uh, I'm slowly starting to collect these Iron Mans. They're, they're not that expensive, uh, especially like once you get into 12 centers and stuff. Obviously, the key issues are key issues, but um, the in-betweens you can get for pretty affordable. I keep finding the, I don't know if someone just had a huge Iron Man collection around here. And they're trying to weed it out, but I keep finding these Bronze Age Iron Mans for cheap, so I'll keep picking them up. Uh, next up, got Wolverine 42, just a run filler for me. Um, so I'm trying to basically complete Wolverine 1 through 100 just because I have so many of them at this point. Uh, and that, and hey, it's Mark Silvestri, you can't go wrong. Got a Daredevil 322. Uh, this is Fall from Grace Chapter 3. I actually needed this to complete that Fall from Grace storyline. I bought a big lot back about a few months ago just to get the first appearance of Bullseye. And for some reason, it came with like four copies of Chapter 5, but I got no copies of this. So I went ahead and just grabbed this because why not? And it came in an ultra, one of those big, thick ultra pro bags like that were really big in the 90s for sports cards and stuff. I don't, heard, do they, I don't even know if they make these anymore. Maybe they do, and I'm crazy, but it's like a really nice bag for a buck. I uh, got Marvel versus DC number two. I was kind of hoping they'd hop all four. Uh, I think these things are starting to, what, 
I don't want to say heating up, maybe lukewarming up, I guess. <laughs> so if you try to get like the whole set on eBay, it's like more than $10 for some reason. So, and like, as kind of going back to Superman 75, these are sentimental for me. I remember really going after these as a kid and just enjoying all the amalgam universe and stuff. So once again, if nothing else, I'll throw this in a contest entry and that stuff. So but that was great. And of course, like I said, I wish they had the full set because they also had the number one. Um, and this is the one with the Dan Jurgens art in it. And Dan Jurgens, he's probably my favorite 90s artist. So thought it was cool to find that. Uh, next up, got the Darkness number one. I've never seen this variant cover before. It's not going to show up well on my camera, I don't think. But it's just like the black variant, I guess I saw it was called. Uh, so this is like the the actual you know first issue of the Darkness. I didn't know if it was like the, another run or what. But for a buck, I figured, you know, it's good Sylvester cover. Let's go ahead and pick that up. Uh, I got more run filler for me, X-Men 240, another Mark Silvestri. So didn't have the, the Inferno storyline in this one. So once again, trying to complete the, you know, the X-Men and the you know, 150 and up basically at this point. Anything below that's kind of expensive. Uh, once again, run filler, X-Men 214. I think that's a Barry Windsor Smith. So once again, for a buck, you don't leave these laying. Slowly starting to get a little bit into getting these um, mid 40s and 50s silver surfers because those are on the Infinity Gala. This one's actually the crossover issue or one of them. Uh, so got some cool Ron Lim art on there, of course. So couldn't leave that in there. Find the Plastic Man number one from the Kyle Baker run for a buck. So once again, can't leave those number ones in there. Uh, so the Lobo movie looming figure, I may as well just go ahead and pick this one up too. Got a Lobo number one from that uh, Simon Beasley drawn arc, the mini series. So once again, definitely not going to leave that in the bins. And it's funny about all, you know, this whole big thing of books. Uh, there was a dude who got there before me and he had like a whole shopping cart of stuff already from those bins. And he was like getting tons of the, uh, the 20 centers. And I'm just like, if I'm finding this stuff so far, what in the world did he get? I know as collectors, we shouldn't loom on stuff like that, but man, he got, if I got there like an hour early, like who knows what else I'd be able to show. Uh, but no, oh well, uh, got JLA Avengers number one. Uh, so once again, I was surprised to see this in a dollar because sometimes when you get those prestige format books and half price books, they'll just kind of treat them as a book and put like a $5 sticker on them. But they actually, this fit in the bag, so I just threw a dollar on it. So I absolutely love this George Perez run of art. It's amazing. So had to have that, even though I already got a copy in a mile area over there. Um, don't know if Miss Hustle's still in the chat, but I got an Electra Assassin number one. Uh, so I know she likes uh, Electra. So there's the Bill Sienkiewicz. Awesome drawn arc of Electra. So there's that. All right. So before I get into the 20 centers, I'll go ahead and go over the chat. Or man, he's still killing me on that. Did, it, did Wizard say X Files one half is worth $80? Um, poor man said he sold his run of X Files to half price books. <laughs> At this point, he may as well have. I mean, they're only dollar anyway. I just like those old covers. It kind of reminds me of Sandman a little bit, except with you know the real life twist because it has Mulder and Scully on the cover. Uh, JD says Iron 53 is historic and cheap. You know, like I said, besides like I think 55 and like maybe the first 10. The most of the, actually even maybe maybe just the first five like I think I got an issue something coming up from the first ten a lot of them are pretty affordable so it's like why not go after them uh, TJ says X Files may not be worth much these days but those yeah exactly those covers are beautiful reminds me of the old Gold Key comics yeah absolutely man I never thought of it that way but yeah I, I've always at the very least I always love those covers like I said Adler's art as we know from The Walking Dead it's pretty gritty style. Um, which I think suited X Files okay, but those covers were very beautiful. Uh, Stay Puff says I bought those Marvel DC books when they came out. Yeah, same here, man. Uh, Jason, I guess he was missing two. He says he had one, three, and four, so he missed an issue two. Foreman says, Yeah, but I wish I sold X Files or someone in the community instead of dumb half price books. You know what's worse about trading in video games? Don't trade in the GameStop. <laughs> you will lose money every single time. Uh, so yeah, that's, I don't, I wouldn't mind trading in the half, I'm, maybe, maybe I'll trade in the half price books and see what happens just because they've given me so much at this point. Uh, Jason Smith says, spoiler alert, that was a fake silver server. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> anyway, 
Thanks for the heads up, Jason. Uh, Miss Hustle loves the covers and says Bill Sienkiewicz is amazing on the Electra Assassin. Stay Pop says someone on Instagram sent me a signed Jelly Avenger by George Perez as a birthday gift last year. That's cool. That's awesome, man. Glad to hear that. Uh, poor man says the score stay puffed. Oh, there's Tacoma. He's still here floating around. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Jason says, hello. I should have read it in the nineties. <laughs> there we go. All right. So I got, I had to rebag, I think every single one of these. And the other problem with these is there's a lot that have the stickers on them because they basically took their trash bins that were, you know, 50 cent bins that they just put the price right on the book. Um, and then they just kind of combine it all together. So hopefully they just go toward more toward that style and putting the stickers on the book. Cause I hate that type of stuff as you'll see here in a second. So first one I drew out of there was X-Men number four. I believe this is the, uh, the Omega red issue that people debate if it's worth money or not. It's really not <laughs> for what people pretend it is because it's a first appearance, but there's like 10 million copies of this. Um, but once again, I don't leave these laying around. I try to pick them up. But the dreaded 50 cent yellow Clarence sticker of shame is on there. And those yellow ones don't come off. So uh, we'll see what I can do about that. Nothing else. I might just give it away. Just let someone else give it the their old, the old college try, as they say. Oh, I forgot some of those dollar books. We'll go back to that in a second. Uh, also came with number five, I guess, the first full appearance, if you will, I guess. Once again, the 50 cent yellow sticker of shame is stuck to the comic. Save those for last. Uh, let's see, new X-Men 118. So I'm missing a couple new X-Men's. I couldn't remember which one, so I just bought every one of them they had for 20 cents. <laughs> uh, so once again, going back to Grant Morrison, I think this is a top three Grant Morrison run for me. So I got 118, 119, and luckily they didn't have stickers on them. 124, always like that cover of the Zorn eating tater chips part three. So there we go. 125 with one of my boys, Beak. So hopefully Beak will make a comeback one day, but probably not because for some reason Marvel at the time didn't really like the Morrison run. People did. So RIP Beak. Maybe we'll see you one day down the line. 129. Got a cool Phantom X cover there. One of his very, very early appearances, obviously. So love this run mainly for Phantom X. Uh, got an X Force number two second appearance of Deadpool for twenty cents, but unfortunately it has a dreaded thirty one cent sticker. I don't even know, like, I don't know why this ever had a thirty one cent sticker on it. But, and one of those ones that doesn't want to come off. Nineties-ified X Factor one hundred shiny red blood foil cover. I believe this is from the Peter David run. So cool book there. Dreaded 50 or 25 cent Clarence sticker of shame. Ghost Rider number one. Got Garth Ennis and awesome Clayton Crane artwork in this one. So love me some Clayton Crane. So I picked that up. Got Mystique number one from the Brian K. Vaughn run. Cool cover there from uh, Joseph Michael Lenser. Actually, I might just go ahead and get the sign by him next month. So I'll put that in my uh, Cincinnati pile there. <laughs> Um, a very, very rough, destroyed, beat up reader copy, if you will. I guess comic colics would probably call this a potato. So we'll call this a potato copy of Captain America 360, the first appearance of Crossbones. Um, like I said, the cover is almost falling off. I didn't even realize that when I bought it. I probably would have left it in there, honestly. Uh, but nonetheless, got the first Crossbones for 20 cents. So. And the pages look like they got like put in a nuclear bomb site or something because they are like as tan as I've ever seen. So, but nonetheless, hey, first crossbones for 20 cents. Yay. All right. Before I get into my last half price, man, I'm still on this. I'm sorry, guys. It's going to be a long video. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we'll get back to the chat real quick. Poor, okay. TJ Watson says, J Avengers, I want them all in 9.9. .9. I have one so far. Man, that's awesome. That'd be cool to have all four of them slabbed in like nine nines and eventually try to work your way into gold labels, depending on, on, uh, if, you know, Kurt Busick gets out there. I know George Perez, he's probably about done with the convention circuit stuff. So, um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about Kurt Busick for a while. So hopefully they're all doing okay. Uh, poor man says that is, I had an Instagram account since March. I just started using it and I forgot how to set up an account. 
Yeah, man, I'm still learning how to use. I have an Instagram. If you guys didn't know, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to use it myself. And I don't even know how people do like those photo stories or anything yet. But hey, it's there, and people keep tagging me, and then I forget about the tag later in the day. And then yeah, find those nine nines. Miss Hustle had to water her dog. Yes, that's very important. Good job, Miss Hustle. Says, what's the best X Men story or series? There are so many, I'm confused. And yeah, if you guys want to answer that in the chat as well, please. I'm curious to see what everyone's opinion is on the best X-Men story. I, I really like Grant Morrison's run, as I've just said. Um, it's it's a little out there. It can be. There's so many like new characters that he introduces in it. Um, so it might be for a little bit more seasoned X-Men reader. I personally like and think is a good jumping on point for new X-Men readers, the Joss Whedon, John Cassidy run of Astonishing X-Men 1 through 25. Uh, I And then there's a giant size X-Men number one the finale of that arc. I think for new readers, that's a good modern way to step into the X-Men universe and see what it's all about. Um, and yeah, Tacoma Comics just nailed it right on the head there. X-Men 94 to 279 of the Uncanny run. Yeah, that's pretty much where like the X-Men as we know today took off, especially with that giant size X-Men number one going into X-Men 94 and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, just to pick one, I would probably say Astonishing X-Men just because it's, it's very new reader friendly in my opinion. Uh, JD says he loves that Ghost Rider Clay Creighton, ah, Clayton Crane cover. And Puff says that Mystique run had some great covers. Yes, they certainly did. <laughs> uh, first Crossbones, good for a Nowhere near Mint Monday tag. LOL. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Actually, I got a, I got a good tag. I got a good comment coming up for that tag, too. JD says there is a Jim Mint 10 JLA average on eBay, $2,000. Dang, $2,000 for that book. It's a great book, but I don't know if it's worth that much. <laughs> Jason says Miss Hustle's dog would have lived without water. Speaking of water, you guys are making me thirsty. What's up, John's Comics with Kids? He's also uh, put in a, um, a contest entry for my contest. Check out his chat. He's got a lot of cool stuff. Some great enthusiasm surrounded about comics. So check out John's channel. Uh, he's got some good stuff as well. And then lastly, Miss Hustle says, Go if you're giving me the number hard to find, forget about it, LOL. Yeah, like I said, Miss Hustle, you could probably find Astonishing X-Men in trade form for pretty cheap. Or uh, if you guys have the Marvel Unlimited app for cheap up north, I recommend that too. I think they're all on there. Uh, but nonetheless, I have hot dog and grandstanded long enough. My last little bit from Half Price Books, because I still got stacks. Um, I found Adam, Legend of the Blue Marvel for a dollar. So I think this book, for whatever reason, maybe someone in the chat can, you know, tell me why. But this is not a cheap book. This is like a minimum, I think, $50 plus on eBay. Uh, and this copy is actually pretty minty. I'd probably put it around like 9.6. I think there was like the tiniest of tiny, like some things on the very, I don't actually, actually I can see it now. So something probably be pressed out. Uh, but nonetheless, like I, I kind of looked at this and it's still flipping through. I'm like, Oh yeah, it's that Adam legend of the blue Marvel book. So I figured I'd pick it up. But why I went back and got that is because I saw this one first. I'm like, Oh, there's that issue too. Okay. That's kind of neat. Um, okay. Turns out they had the whole run. So there's three, there's four, and then number five. Like I said, I might, I, I, it's just like, I'm thinking about cracking them open and reading them, but at the same time, it's just, I'm, I don't know anything about this character. Um, maybe someone can at least tell me if it's a good read or not, but if, if nothing else, I might at least go ahead. I'm, I might eventually sell this just to, you know, put the money towards something I want, like a commission or something. But yeah, this is like one of those lots, like I get, I could basically take a $5 item and make a nice commission out of it because I'm looking to spend at least like $100 on one commission next month. So this might be my ticket to more or less getting that for $5 in a weird twisted way. So something I'm thinking about, but nonetheless, really cool find. That's why I said like this guy had a whole shopping cart of comics, but then he left stuff like this in there, I guess. So, all right, that was my half price books haul. All right, one more time, check on the chat. Let's see. I wish there was like a little bookmark I could point where I left off. <laughs> uh, John says, very impressed by your knowledge, very informative. Oh, thanks, John. I appreciate that, man. 
Uh, and then talking about the Blue Marvel, JD says, nice, fine, low print. Uh, Foreman says the same thing. Puff says, cool run. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Jay Smith says, read on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to have a live stream of me just sitting here reading. I, don't, I won't even read it aloud either. I'll just be holding it and then sometimes look up at the chat and then look up at the camera and then awkwardly just go back to my reading as you guys kind of just stare at my posters and stuff. <laughs> uh, TJ says, I always thought it was fascinating that X-Men 94 used to be the big book back in the day. Now it's flipped the giant size X-Men number one, which I always believe it should be. Yeah, I, I always kind of thought that was a little weird too. I know what you're talking about because it seemed like for a while, I kind of thought X-Men 94 was the first, and then it went the giant size based on the prices they were going for. But yeah, you're right now. It should be giant size X-Men number one. Because those things, the way they were, because they're giant size, the way they were handled and printed back in the day, those are harder to find in better shape too. Poor man says, just sell it. <laughs> there we go. Decision made. Thanks, poor man. Uh, comic Boys, man. How's it going? Glad he can make it. You making any more uh, videos? Comic Boys haven't seen you around for a minute, I feel like. Uh, but glad to have you. Everyone saying what's up. I'm sure you can find a YouTuber that showed the book, says Jason. That's why I'm saying read it on YouTube. Okay, I got you, Jason. <laughs> All right, so I think this is, I got an eBay haul here. I actually had to rebag every one of these. So these were a little bit beat up, but I think I got them for about $275 a piece when it was shipped, when it was all said and done. Uh, so there's some cool books in here. Some that, you know, were a part of the lot and I wasn't really looking for. Kind of like Anthro number one. Nonetheless, pretty cool book. Why not? <laughs> it was in the lot. It's 12th Center from DC. So I thought that was pretty neat. Just kind of one, not one of the ones I was looking for. Oh, let's see what Comic Books Boy, or Comic Boys has. He says, just had a baby trying to work OT since wife is out working on a couple, though. Well, congratulations, man. That's awesome to hear. <laughs> I'm yeah, obviously family comes first, so take your time with that. Uh, but that's great news, Kyle boys. I'm glad to hear it. Don't work yourself to death though. Uh, try to at least get a couple hours of sleep. Uh, hey, what's up, Prowler six seven one? He says eBay haul time. Oh yeah, I've got I've got a few. <laughs> uh, all right, so we've got Captain Marvel number two. These are kind of you know going back to some of my other thoughts from earlier. You know, these things are, they're not super expensive. You have to try and get, um, and I like getting me some, you know, Marvel and DC 12 centers from the late sixties and early seventies. So two seventy five a piece. I'll pick these up all day. That's for sure. So I got number two, uh, I got a number 11 as well. So I'm trying to get these before, you know, everyone kind of starts to notice, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a uh, heat up on these Captain Marvel soon. So like getting these and then there's number 15 i think this is a double for me so i'm gonna have to you know go back to selling those blue marvels i'll probably end up selling the double of this pretty soon too got a hawk and dove number two as part of that lot as well and then uh, going back to you know like i was saying the iron mans they're not too hard to find and you know the pretty affordable got an iron man number nine like i said two dollars and 70 some odd cents got i can feel a little bit of water damage it could probably be pressed out um but yeah, definitely a very sharp book in my opinion. Besides the little logging that's going on there, uh, I think this could be, you know, if, for whatever reason I decided to press this, I think it should be pressed into a pretty good copy. And then there's a bunch of Iron Man's here actually. So I got number 30, which, you know, like I said, I had to re none of these even came in a bag or board. So considering they weren't in a bag and board, I, besides the yellowing that's going off the pages, I was surprised these were good condition as they were because they were musty too because the other problem was i had to wait because i ran out of bags of like everything mylars polys i was actually out of everything after last week so i had to wait for my mylars to come in to bag these up and they smelled so bad i actually just threw them in the closet and shut the door <laughs> so but nonetheless there's 37 42 pretty cool cover there i thought so like I said, I'm, I'm getting dragged into this Iron Man stuff in the 70s. So there's 74, 75, 75. So here at this point, I'm just going to keep working on this run. 89, 95. Unfortunately, this is the most beat up one, which is this is the one that drew me to the lot first. But 
got a 150. I always really like this cover of Doom and Iron Man fighting it out. But, yeah, this is probably like the worst one of the bunch, unfortunately. Super duper spine roll. Rusty staples. But, hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> Still cool to have. Uh, 173. 177. 182. Kind of reminds me of that uh, Spider-Man cover. I think uh, Bueller was showing it today on his uh, web of spider-man video uh where he's highlighting the keys like the first eddie brock hand or whatever it's like the exact same type of cover 190 193 and that's the last iron man from this lot all right and the other main reason I wanted to get this lot. And actually, I think it was four different lots, but I just kind of combined them all in one. I kind of, I think it was one of those ones is either I got them like a, more or less a snipe or whatever on eBay where no one bid on it. Or I think I might just made an offer on four lots and the guy saw what I was trying to do and accepted because he realized he only had to ship to one person instead of four. Uh, but, you know, I was talking to the great legend on um, the Comic Core every Friday night at 10 p.m. It's getting me into the Shazam. <laughs> I'll be honest. So we were talking Shazam one night and I'm like, man, I should probably start to try to get those 20 cent Shazams at least because obviously anything older than that, it's kind of unattainable. It's very expensive to collect those at this point. Uh, but nonetheless, for cheap, I got Shazam number two. So I always thought that was a cool cover. I still need the first issue. Unfortunately, it's not in the slot. Uh, I got number three though. And some weirdo. <laughs> It's like they took a hole punch and just punched out like one hole right there. It doesn't go through the book. It's just the cover. They punched one hole. Why you would do that, I don't know. Maybe someone has a cool explanation for that, but probably not. Uh, number six. Number 27. And number 34. So once again, I... Like I said, I'm I need to dumb down my collecting a little bit, but I don't want to leave cheap Shazam laying around too. All right, before I get these last ones, let's check the chat. Prowler says he's working on an early Captain America, or I'm sorry, Captain Marvel run too. Yeah, and now's the time. I mean, now's not the time for some issues, just because you've got like the Carol Danvers gaining her powers, which I just bought on my last live stream. If you guys watched that, luckily I got it for a good price. Uh, but you also got like all the Thanos stuff that happens around the mid 20s going into the 30s when uh, Jim Starlin started that run. So some of those ever since the Infinity War movie have gone up quite a bit. So but those early ones, you can get some good prices on those right now if you need to. Uh, Miss Hustle says trilogy, too. I think it's all day Iron Man day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also had Strange Tales 147. Love collecting Strange Tales. I believe this is some sort of, I don't know if it's a reprint or not, saw an older story with Stan Lee and King Jack Kirby, but nonetheless, you got some cool Kirby action there. Oh, what's up, Comics Miss Explain? Too sweet. There you go. <laughs> um, I couldn't believe this one was in there. Got an X-Men 37. Uh, as you guys know, these old X-Mens, they're, they are not cheap. Like anymore, I feel like you got to pay a minimum of like $20 for a Silver Age X-Men. So to get one for $2.75, this not completely destroyed and beat up. I was happy with this purchase just because of this book. And then the last one, I think this was the oldest one. This might be from 67, I think. Uh, the Atom, number 25. So another cool old DC cover. It's got that nice checkerboard on top. I love collecting these really old covers. Nice, pretty sharp copy, too. It's got a little bit of spine stuff going on, but... For, for the 60s, I, I can't ask for better than that. So, like I said, it's just none of those lots. Like, it just came in like a priority box with nothing around it, no bags and boards. And somehow it made it to my doorstep without being completely destroyed. All right. John says, I feel like it's a good time to snag some FF and X Men issues because I think they're due to rise even more. I'm working on a lot of 150 to 300. Yeah, it, it, you're not wrong um, because right now it's kind of in that flex. I think some people are specking on the early keys right now because they know once that first announcement from Disney comes along, they're going to go even higher. Like obviously, you, got, you know, Hulk 181, first Wolverine, it, it's been going up slowly for years. It's going to keep going up. Giant size X-Men number one, it's going to keep going up no matter what. Um, and like I said, it's probably going to, you know, go up by 50% once they do that first announcement. And then X-Men 94, same thing. 
uh, any of the Silver Age stuff. But right now, those non-keys, if you're looking just to fill that run from 150 to 300, kind of like I'm trying to do, no one's collecting those, like, except for the first appearance of Gambit, basically. And there's probably a couple others I'm forgetting off the top of my head, which, you know, X-Men 266, that thing's going to keep going up because of the tease of that movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a good time to try to at least collect the ones that people aren't looking for. Uh, John says, that's a nice, solid X-Men 37. Thank you. Uh, that strange tells is semi key says JD. Okay. I'll have to look that up. See what it is. I didn't realize that. Um, all right, let's see what we got next. I think, oh uh, yeah, I got a, uh, I bought an auction lot off the great legends auction. Uh, oh, wait, before I keep talking, let's see. Tacoma's pointing out the other keys I forgot about. Uh, 221 first Mr. Sinister. That one actually doesn't go for that much either, surprisingly. I think actually I won that in Dazzy's contest. Daz the Key Chaser actually gave me a copy of that. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, you're probably talking like what, 20 bucks or more, probably, depending on where you're getting it and what shop. And then 242 uh Jubilee's first appearance, too. Good time to hop on those as well. I think there might be one. It's just like first Psylocke in the X-Men book. That one goes for a little bit too, I think, as well. But nonetheless, uh, Chad from the Comic Core, I bought a lot off him off Great Legends Auction. I don't even remember how many books it was actually supposed to be. But I think Chad saw I want it, and he's just like, well, you're my Comic Core brother, so I'm going to give you a few extras. And then he gave me this whole stack. <laughs> so I know there's a few I, I wanted and bid on as a part of that auction. But I was just like, holy crap. <laughs> and then, you know, Chad's gimmick is he doesn't use bags and boards. so. That's where all my bags and boards went. Thanks, Chad. But no, seriously, though, thanks, Chad, if you're watching this on a real this, this is awesome, man. I really appreciate this. this there's some very cool books in here. Uh, so I'll quit rambling and show you guys what the books are. Uh, Captain America 600. Very awesome Alex Ross cover for the anniversary issue. So happy to have that. Uh, all new Ultimate Comics Spider-Man number 10. So issue 10 from that Miles Morales run. It's pretty cool. Uh, he threw in Ghostbusters number one. Uh, I believe this is the Chris Burnham run. Who doesn't love him? Some Ghostbusters. Uh, Voltrons. Actually, I didn't realize these were a thing. The Alex Ross did covers for Voltron. I think that, that I mean, that's got to be Alex Ross. <laughs> so Voltron number one, really awesome cover. Number two. This might be my favorite, though, of all the... Uh, all the characters coming out of the, the whole Voltron thing right there. That's awesome. And then issue four. I thought I had a three. Maybe it's just in the stack later. <laughs> Poor man says, I think Stay Puff hates Ghostbusters. <laughs> I kind of doubt that. Giant size, Just League of America, number one, 80 page giant. So I guess get them germs. I didn't realize Art Germ did a, a cover for this. So there's a cool. Early art germ cover, if you will. <laughs> Got a Batman 80 page giant number one, Andy Kubert. So I'm, I probably actually, I'll put this on my repile. That's one I want to read after this video. I, that's one of my favorite eras of Batman, that whole Grant Morrison time. I mean, it's okay, but I mean, when you get just the artist they had, you had Tony Daniel and Andy Kubert around that time, they had some good stuff. Uh, these were also doubles for me, but happy to have them because it is a good run. I got Deadpool number one from the Brian Posehn, Jerry Duggan run. Uh, and also Tony Moore did the art, and the, you know, the guy who did the early Walking Dead stuff and a couple other things. Uh, but nonetheless, really cool run of Deadpool here. There's issue two. And this is hilarious too, as you guys can tell by that cover. Then issue three. Let's see. Puff says, you can say I don't like the reboot movie. And then poor man says he hasn't seen it. Yeah, yeah that reboot. <laughs> you know, I'll be honest. I didn't hate the reboot of Ghostbusters. But it's just something we didn't need. So, like I said, it's, it's like a good rainy day, like it's on HBO, watch it type movie. But I can't recommend it more than that. Fantastic Four number one from the Matt Fraction Mark Bagley run. Like I said, who's in love some Mark Bagley? There's two, and then three. Then he also sent a couple silvers. 
Uh, this one might have been a part of the, like I said, I think some of that was part of the original lot I bid on, uh, but it's been uh, so long now I'm trying to remember. Uh, hey, what's up, Nerd Vision? He says, what's up? Looks like CW got a good chunk of books. Yeah, we're already over an hour in and I'm not even close to being done. <laughs> So, got a, a world's finest 123, cool 12 center. Always, oh, like I said, if it's 12 cents, I it's great if it's DC or Marvel. Uh, this is the main one, one of the two main ones I want in this lot. And we'll we'll go ahead. What was it? You know, I used the term potato earlier. Um, I think uh, Stay Puff had a cool hashtag like messed up Mondays or something for you know describe a, a bad copy of a book. <laughs> we might have to make that a tag. Uh, Chad sent me this Just League of America number one, nine, the origin of the Justice League. I was actually kind of wanting to read this, but I could barely get this and the bag it was in into this mylar. <laughs> As you can see, like this whole side's missing. Like there were crumbs in the bottom of the bag from where the book was flucking away. Uh, but man, it's so cool to have that. I, I really, I, I've always, yeah, me too, poor man. I've always loved this cover. So I had to have it once he put it up for auction and no one was interested in it just because of the condition and stuff. But I was just like, yeah, I need that. <laughs> but yeah, this is the main reason I wanted the auction. So even though if I breathed on it wrong, it would fall apart. Happy to have it. Yeah. He says nowhere near mint Monday. So yeah, either messed up Monday or nowhere near mint Monday, get your Instagram handles ready and make that a tag. So there you go. Cool cover. Absolutely love it. And he says, now that's a poor man's comic. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the other one I really wanted was Saga Swamp Thing number one. As I kind of talked about, like, feels like an hour ago at this point, which probably was uh, how much I'm slowly starting to get in the Swamp Thing and the 70s and 80s stuff. Uh, so definitely wanted that. I think Chad said this was a money book. I'm not sure. I didn't look it up yet, but another thing I'm, like I said, I'm kind of getting into too much at this point, but another thing I've been getting into a lot recently is just the, the horror stuff from the seventies, uh, from DC and here's secrets of the haunted house. Number one. So absolutely awesome cover there. Um, love this book. I'm definitely going to give this a read through and this one's in really good condition too. So this is probably, you know, the main reason to get this whole auction lot, not to mention all the stuff Chad sent me extra. <laughs> so, um, then he sent me a lot of DCB covers. Uh, so I got Superman number one, uh, cool David Mack cover. Got Nightwing 46. Awesome cover right there. Missed out on this when it came out originally. So I was happy to get that. Oh, it looks like Mr. D has joined us. What's up, Mr. D? How's it going, man? Saw his, uh, he had a good haul yesterday, too, if you guys want to catch that. He has some great books there. Uh, Green Arrow 43B cover. Flash 50. Awesome. Who's that? Francisco Matina. So, cool cover. I Actually, I missed out on this one, too, but I'm glad to have it because I believe it's the return of Impulse. Or Kiv I think he's just coming back as Impulse because he's in the Impulse costume. So, happy to have that. Because he's one of my uh, boys from the 90s, if you will, I guess. The other one I missed out, speaking of Matina, there's uh, Deathstroke 33. Cool uh, Damien fa face paint Deathstroke cover, I guess. So but that was really cool. Sent me, here's one for you, poor man. The Adam Hughes Captain America number one. So there's that. Put this in a full bet because that's all I had left for the day. <laughs> Detective Comics 984, looks like Mark Brooks variant. So I kind of fell off to uh, Detective after James Tynan left. Uh, so I'm going to actually crack this open and read it, see what's going on with that. Batman 52 from the Tom King run. Very cool cover there, but I might read. I heard this one's not too bad. I just, I had a really bad taste in my mouth after Batman 50, like I'm sure a lot of people did. I uh, got a Superior Spider-Man number one. Great run right here if you guys haven't read it. Um, like I said, I know not everyone's a Dan Slott fan out there, but I really did enjoy this Dan Slott and Ryan Stegman on the pencils. He knocked out of the park on that. Uh, probably one of the coolest things Chad sent me. He sent me a Just League number two, uh, the Jim Lee pencils variant. So I think these are one in 100, if I remember correctly. So that was very nice of him. So thank you once again, Chad. Um, yeah, I don't see these at my shop at all. So that's pretty cool of him to send that. Uh, I believe this is the B cover, Jim Chunks, Amazing Spider-Man number one from the new run. 
It's a pretty solid new run so far, except it's going a little bit too far into Buffy territory for me with the split personalities. Still reminds me of when Xander got split into two in season five, I think it was. And they split like, you know, the, the manly features into Xander and then like the childish features into another Xander. That's pretty much exactly what Nick Spencer has done to Peter Parker in this book. So there you go. That's my thoughts on the Amazing Spider-Man run so far. But Otley, Otley's doing excellent. So thumbs up to him. Speaking of Batman 50, there's Batman 50. You know, enough said about that. Scales and Scoundrels, number one. I'm not familiar with this book. If someone else is in the chat, please let me know if this is a good read because I haven't heard of this one. I think this is War in the Lao variant for Green Lanterns 49. I've been picking up it. I don't get the, the – my store doesn't order a lot of Green Lantern. Uh, because you know they just a lot of people fell off after John's left, but these Warren Lau covers I've noticed have been pretty cool. Uh, but my store hardly ever gets them, so cool to have that. And then Marvel's The Pit is the last one on the stack. So once again, th big thanks to Chad from the Comic Corps. Check us out Friday nights. Uh, I guess he probably won't be there. This he's on leave this week. Basically, uh, he's got some stuff he obviously is taken care of. So, but nonetheless, big thanks to Chad for that. That was an awesome lot. Um, so yeah, let's get back to the chat and then I'll get to another lot. <laughs> like I said, I had a good vacation, I guess. All right. Mr. D says that night wing, he missed that too. He wants that. Uh, poor man's got to keep up with the Joneses. LOL. Comic boy says Matina has been doing some good, awesome stuff. Yes, he has. Like he's got some great B covers. Uh, Jason Smith says, nice. Poor man's nope. I haven't made it yet. Mark Brooks has been doing some nice tech covers, says Mr. D. Stay Puff agrees he likes Superior Spider-Man. Hustle says it's wicked. Puff says love that Green Lantern cover. Got one myself. Mr. D agrees. Warren Lau, nice covers. And Puff says Chad is awesome. And he is. <laughs> so I probably should have saved this one for last, but it's sitting on top of another pile. <laughs> Puff says, damn, another light. You should have called this the Mega Hall. I brought two waters, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, we've been talking about, you know, Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, and spec books. This is probably like, out of, out of all the purchases and stuff I did last week so far, this is probably like the one I got the most trigger happy on. I didn't pay a ton for it, but I paid probably a little bit more than I normally would have. Um, but it wasn't three figures or anything like that. Not even close, luckily. So got to miss Marvel number one. Finally, I was just like this book, it, it just keeps going up and up and up. Uh, and I've been wanting to grab a copy before, you know, even once, cause I think once that first trailer hits, it's going to be almost ignorantly like unattainable at that point. But nonetheless, got a cool miss Marvel number one new stand version. So got that happy to have that in the collection. Finally. Then it also came with an issue two, which I think I might have another one of these, maybe. So just going in the pile, giveaways, and then number 12. So had to get a Miss Marvel finally. Wanted to make sure I secured a copy of that before it got too out of hand. I don't know why I didn't show this on my antique store video last week. I just kind of forgot about it, but I had another antique store haul from a different antique store, actually. So don't sleep on your antique store is basically my message here. Um, I'll just go ahead and show this one first. It's kind of a, not the best copy. It's got a lot of color breaking bins on it and stuff, but I've just, it's funny because I've never seen it in the wild before. And then I saw another one at this convention that was like the exact same condition and same price. Uh, but I got a Batman 423, uh, cool Todd McFarlane cover. I think because this is the newsstand, this might be the first print. I could be wrong. I know I kind of looked it up on my phone. I know usually the numbers on that mean, yeah, poor man says the second print, but it seemed like the second prints that looked like this had like the little Batman and the cowl right here. So I wasn't 100% sure. Like I said, I didn't really care to research it, but I got a decent deal enough on this and I'm paying like maybe four or five bucks for this. Probably a little bit too much for the condition it's in, but nonetheless, I always like this cover from Todd McFarlane. So I figured why not just go ahead and get it five bucks, maybe because sometimes I'm going to antique stores that are, especially ones that are really close to me, like this one was. I'll just pick stuff like this up. So that way, like when the vendor comes back in, I'm like, oh, I've been selling comics. I sold this one for five bucks. What was it? It was a Batman. Okay, so I'll bring in more Batman. That, so I might get something cooler because I bought this and I can go back in another month and see what they brought in. So at least that's my logic for spending five bucks for this. So 
Um, another vendor in there had some Spider-Mans that were, I think, a buck fifty. And I'm trying to fill holes in my uh, 300 and up run, basically. So I got for a dollar fifty a piece. I got Amazing Spider-Man 342, and most of these are in pretty dang good condition too. I had to bag and board them, but they're at least bagged in a like a Ziploc bag, basically. So there's that. Uh, I keep tripping over copies of this for cheap. Got another Amazing Spider-Man 344, first appearance of Cletus Cassidy. So once again, I might end up selling another one of these two because I think I this is the third copy I found in like six months in like dollar and two dollar bins. So thought that was really awesome. That's kind of the reason I started to put together a lot. Uh, 345, cool little venom hiding up there. <laughs> so once again, these are just whole fillers for me in that mid 300 Spider-Man range. 348, new stand. 349, new stand. And then 351, because I already had 350, so I left that there. So, once again, cool, cool Spider-Man stuff. Let's see what the chat has to say. So, Stay Puff says, I would be happy to have it, whatever print. So, cool. Mr. D says, I got a first and second print. I didn't know, so I bought both. The hell with it. Great. Toddy Max cover, regardless. I agree. Uh, Miss Hustle also loves the cover. The girl looks like Barbie, I'm just saying. So, we'll put that up for comparison again. There's Barbie. So there we go. Yeah, but like I said, unfortunately, this book was, it was just like in a stack of like old garbage books and like it's just nothing bagged, nothing boarded. So well, sometimes that's where you find the best stuff. Uh, poor man's now questioning if it's a first. Like I said, we'll, we'll try to figure that out. I might try to uh, do some more research on that and report back on my next video. TJ says, I recently gave a 98 one of those Batmans away. Man, that would have been a cool giveaway. Uh, what's up, Alfred A. Comics? Thanks for making it, man. He says, hello, everyone. Cool Spideys. Thank you. And uh, all right, time for another lot. <laughs> uh, I finally got my books from uh, one of the uh, Warriors auctions, the New York Warriors. They always have great auctions, as we know. Uh, so I bought, I believe, a lot of seven from Manny NYC. And they shipped last week, so I was happy to finally get them. And I probably got these for like, I think, $25, which I think is a steal for these books. So I got The Inhumans, number seven. Pretty cool bug cover there. Adventure Comics, 369. Some cool, uh, is that, I guess first, More Drew the Merciless. So there's that cool cover there. Uh, another run, I, like I said, I know I'm collecting too much stuff, uh, but another run I wouldn't mind starting to get is some of those early Hulk issues, uh, because besides like the first couple, a lot of those are very affordable too. So he had uh, Crumble Hulk 108. So there's that, but that was a really cool cover. And actually this copy is pretty dang clean too. So as you can kind of see by the spine there, there's not a whole heck of a lot going on negatively with that spine. So very, very high quality. Video, or video, sorry, I just read Jason Smith's comment. He says, see what this video is about as long as the Legends videos. <laughs> and then TJ said that was a Neil Adams cover on that Adventure comic. So thanks for confirming that. Uh, Mr. D says, that's a clean looking Hulk bud. All right, so this one's not as clean, but it's still cool to have. Uh, I got a Hulk 104 as well in the lot. Hulk versus Rhino. Like I said, unfortunately, the spine is not as kind as that other one. Alfred says he loved the red on that Hulk cover. Yeah, me too, man. Avengers 51. Yeah, this one's, yeah, it could be a little better. But, hey, for the price I paid, I can't complain. Avengers 41. And the last one from Manny is uh, Tells of Suspense 88. So, like I said, when you're paying $25 for, you know, some sil nice silver and bronze age, you can't complain. All right. Oh, and uh, by the way, I put these on my Instagram too. Uh, but if you guys are collecting the giant size DC stuff from Walmarts, they actually did hit. Uh, looks at least I don't know if it was last week or this week, but Batman number two and Teen Titans number two are now in Walmarts. If you guys are going after those, um, so there we go. Got those. My goodness, am I on the last books? I think I'm on the last books. At a hundred or one hour and eighteen minutes. Woo. 
All right, so going way back to Captain Marvel once again, we talked about how we're collecting Captain Marvel before it gets too out of hand to collect. Uh, so the first one I got, and I think this lot, oh yeah, I'll talk about eBay sellers real quick. Uh, basically, you know, we I've kind of dogged on eBay sellers and not bagging and boarding properly. I found one eBay seller. This guy is awesome. He puts his stuff in my lights too and halfbacks. So I definitely like, I, I actually, this is like the only eBay seller I go to just to see what he has. And if it's something halfway decent, I will pay for it because they're always good quality. They ship in mylars and they ship in like two or three days maximum. So he, he had like a very affordable, very cheap Captain Marvel lot. So I got Captain Marvel 37, very clean copy. Like I said, these aren't my bags. This guy sent them in these Mylar bags. And like I've, it's the only eBay seller I've ever bought from shipped in nice, really high quality bags. So there's 39, 41, number 40. Whoops, went out of order there, but oh well. Cool cover there though. It's like Cosmic Possession. <laughs> you must read Star Leech. So there we go, Star Leech. 46, number 51, 55, number 56, 57, and then I switched to Iron Man because I'm trying to complete, complete some of those too, and these were pretty dirt cheap and very, very good quality. So I got uh, Invincible Iron Man number 90. And then the last book, number one. Well, I don't remember how many books I said were part of this video, but the last book. Oh, no, it's the next last. I take that back. Uh, 91. The one book I forgot to show way back when, that, that one eBay haul I had with uh, the Adam and stuff in it. The guy took probably like a month to ship that. But he, he sent me a reason. He had a good reason why, basically. But it was just funny. He's just like. Yeah, man, I'm sorry it took so long. I'll put in some extras for him. I'm like, oh, cool. Because the last time an eBay seller told me that I got like two Uncanny X-Men's in the 100s, which those books were worth more than a lot I bought. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I wonder what, what I'm going to get. And then he sent me an X-Force number one. <laughs> but it's cool because it's a newsstand. So there we go. Another X-Force number one for the collection. So, oh, my goodness. All right. With that, <laughs> that is the insane mega haul for my vacation. So let's go over the chat one more time before we sign off here. And I uh, have to sort all of this now. Yeah, that's fine. I got my stuff 100% sorted last week. And I basically bought a whole short box of comics in that time. Actually, it's more because of that whole antique store haul I had on Thursday. So let's see. Alfred says, oh, yeah, so happy I found four Miss Marvel number ones this year before it blows up. Yeah, man, it, absolutely. That's a book. I mean, it's if it's not three figures now, it probably will be in the next six months. Uh, Mr. D says he should snack. Yeah, go after one, Mr. D. Why not? Four man said you had some killer pickups, Alfred. Uh, I need to dig in your neighborhood. Oh, yeah. I think it was Alfred who had that video. I think it was last week where he had that uh, the first Tim Drake is Robin, like that ghost newsstand second print. Uh, yeah, you guys should go check out that video. I didn't even, like I said, I was one of those people, I was like, probably doesn't even exist, but hey, he had one in his collection, so it definitely existed somehow. Uh, need, <laughs> poor man says, needs to dig in Alfred's neighborhood. Miss also says, I hope you guys are not the only ones buying books, hoping it blows up, but because you love them, come on now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a combination of love and wanting to get the book before it blows up, I think is the best way to put it. <laughs> Mr. D says, I get distracted too easy by shiny things and half-naked girl covers. <laughs> Alfred says, thanks, BMC. I've been a great hustle this year. A lot of hard work and waking up early. Yeah, you got to get these things early, whether it's antique stores, flea markets, half-price books. You got to get there early. Uh, yeah, shiny things. Everybody loves their shiny things. What is up, Tony Sanders? How's it going, man? Oh, okay. Miss Us says not me. It's because someone said four book of Miss Marvel before it blows up. LOL. Okay. All right. So with everything, oh my God, one, huh, one hour, 23 minutes. Ooh, I'm sorry, guys, to hold you up this long. <laughs> but nonetheless, we'll get some last plugs in and then go over uh, everything. And 
kind of sign off after that. So once again, 200 subscriber contest going on. I got the link below if you guys haven't done that yet or would like to do so. We are up to now 15 entries. So thank you guys. It's been a pretty good response so far. I think I said uh, uh, entry. No, if someone puts an entry number 30, I will add another prize to the prize pool. And if I hit 250 subscribers, I'll add another prize to the prize pool. So we're about halfway to getting another prize added to the contest. And I think I'm only 11 subscribers away till the next milestone for our uh, second or third prize being added. So thank you guys so much for the continued support. I really appreciate all the videos, kind words, thumbs up, all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for that. Uh, once again, we'll have the Comic Core this Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern. I believe the Great Legend will be the host this week. Like I said, Chad has to take care of some stuff out of town. Uh, so I think the Great Legend will be taking over hosting duties. So we'll look forward to that. Who knows who else is going to pop up on that? You never know until Friday at 9.59. We're in the Google Hangout who you're going to be talking with uh, for the next couple hours. Hey, speaking of, there's the Great Legend. You say his name and he shows up. <laughs> He missed my, sh I was showing Shazam's for him even, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, he will be, I think he's going to be the host this week on the Comic Core, 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, 7 Pacific or whatever Pacific time goes by. I don't even remember anymore. Sorry, I have to show 140 some odd books. You kind of forget things. Um, but I just want to thank everybody for showing up, especially even if it's the last second. Um, good stuff. Seawood, thank you, poor man. Great legend show says, hell yeah, like uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's the way it's going to sound in my head. Puff says, great show. Thank you, man. The <laughs> legend says, synchronicity. Uh, yeah. Tony Sanders says, got to watch the recap. Yep. Sorry, man. It's an hour and 25 minutes of insanity here. So, and Miss Hustle says, thanks for sharing. So, now I appreciate it, guys. Just the continued fact that I can throw these live streams up and have like more than two people sit here and type at me is just mind blowing to me. The fact that I can get like more than, you know, five or 10 or 15, that's awesome. So thank you guys. It's an awesome community. Uh, check out, sub up everybody in the chat, as we always say. Um, other than that, I will probably see you guys Friday on the Comic Core. I'll probably won't be posting too many other videos because I just, now I got to spend my time sorting books. So uh, with that being said, uh, thank you guys so much and have a wonderful night.